tawarin. So this is the Astrium Satellite Stevenage site. Well, we've just come out of the mechanical design office and uh, engineering design area and we're just about to go into the uh, manufacturing, assembly, integration and test area. We do some uh, quite exotic things. We grow the purest quartz crystal in the world. The purer the quartz crystal, the better the performance over life. Another quite diverse part of our, uh, our business, designing very specialist antennas. What you really want to be able to do is shape the reflector so that the, the signal on the Earth is actually around the area of interest. But you're also making something that survives the, uh, the launch, so it's got to be a strong, rigid structure, but also have that perfect RF performance that you need. This gives you a bit of a size of the side of a telecommunication satellite, so anything from sort of two metres by three metres. We embed heat pipes inside the panel so that we can actually move heat away from some very specific areas. We're in the space industry, you always remember what, uh, what ultimately uh, the, these items are used for. And when you've launched ones, I've launched three Eurostar 3000 satellites. Absolutely fantastic fun. The sense of achievement when you actually watch the Ariane 5 lift off the launch pad and, uh, and the deployment in space is perfect. And those things are, are operating perfectly in space. It's a great sense of achievement. And not only that, but also with the Earth Observation and Science ones. You're building missions here in Stevenage for deep science missions that uh, are looking for things like the existence of gravitational waves, you're going around Mercury, analysing the surface and, and, the, uh, and the atmosphere of Mercury. So every day is different, every day is exciting. One minute you're in a meeting and uh, you're, you're having a, a discussion about engineering and the next minute you come down here and uh, all of a sudden you see a spacecraft and uh, that's, that's the beauty of it. That's what, uh, that's what it's, uh, it's really about, that's a communications module. Finishing build here in Stevenage and uh, on its way to Portsmouth once we've integrated it on its way to, uh, to a geosynchronous orbit. How are you? You alright? Hi Pat. Uh, nice to see you again. Go on and come on and tell me about uh, where you've got to. So we're in the, uh, the Mars lab working with the European Space Agency uh, and a number of companies on a European lander to, to go to Mars to explore. What's really challenging about this is just how far the Earth and Mars are apart, so just sending signals to, uh, from, from the Earth to control a rover has always been a historic problem. So this is all about autonomous control of the rover, so it's taking the, the existing technology, improving it and then adding this autonomous control. And to do that you have to, to a certain extent, you have to end up doing some physical tests. It's always a bit of a, a, bit of a sort of strange thing, you come from a very clean office environment, you pass all the clean rooms which are, which are used for our production manufacturing and then you come to the, to the Mars yard where Effectively, we're simulating uh, quite a dirty environment. And of course, to make sure that we actually believe and understand where we are, you've got this uh, fantastic uh, simulation of the, uh, of the surface of Mars, which, uh, which just helps us imagine that we're actually there. After you, Andy. So, E3000 SM here. It's nice to see it. I always like it when it gets to this point, because yeah. you, you actually see the uh, the full structure of it. Exactly. You get the, uh, the, four, the four propellant tanks. So, Let's go and have a look at Bepi. Yep. So this is the uh, Bepi Colombo structure, uh, MPO, Mercury Planetary Orbiter. It's fantastic to see the, uh, the size of it actually. It's, uh, it is really coming together. We're making good progress. You can see around the bottom ring here, this is where the other tank will mount, the other large sort of propellant tank. Uh, yeah, okay. No, that's clear. that's clear. Imagine how hot it is going that close to Mercury. Whereas we still have a lot of complexity around the thermal model of a, of a Eurostar, you multiply that by an order of magnitude the closer you get to the Sun. So this, this is going to get part of the way to, uh, towards Mercury, um, and then the other parts will actually go into orbit around it. So all of a sudden you're dealing with temperatures in the hundreds of degrees centigrade, rather than the plus or minus 100 degrees centigrade that you might be in deep space around, around Earth. It is a fantastic job. I mean, where, where else can you be running businesses actually looking at the people side, developing people, and then, and then going into the design, and then ultimately you see the designs come to life in, in the factory here. I mean, after I've had a long, a long week in the office, sometimes the last thing I do on a Friday night is just have a walk around the factory and have a, have a really good look around, just because I love looking at space hardware and understanding the technology that we, that we develop. So it's, it is a fantastic uh, um, industry to be part of. Yeah.